An emergency approach and landing while at cruising altitude is a maneuver that simulates an engine failure during flight. All pilots must understand how to perform this type of maneuver in order to be ready for out of the ordinary situations, such as engine abnormalities or failures. Since emergencies occur suddenly and unexpectedly, pilots must practice emergency approaches and landings regularly to keep the procedures proficient in case they need to be performed. To conduct a simulated engine failure at cruising altitude, first, the pilot or instructor pulls the throttle to idle to simulate the engine failing. Immediately after the power is brought to idle, the pilot must establish the best glide attitude and airspeed, maintaining altitude if airspeed is above best glide speed, which is 68 knots indicated airspeed. Use nose up trim to maintain best glide speed. Usually this is two to three full turns of nose up trim. The pilot should progressively add back elevator trim to help slow the aircraft to best glide while maintaining their current altitude and allowing the most time to handle the simulated engine failure. Once the aircraft is trimmed and at the best glide speed, the pilot must locate a suitable landing site. While choosing a landing site, they must consider the distance from the chosen site, the size of the landing site, the wind direction, and any large hazards or objects. Just like a normal landing, pilots should plan to land with a headwind. As the pilot maneuvers towards their chosen landing site, they need to determine where their high key point will be. This point is over the top of the desired landing point. As the pilot continues to their high key point, they should simulate performing the engine failure during flight checklist. This procedure must be performed from memory, then confirmed by using the checklist. The engine failure during flight checklist is First, pitch for the best glide airspeed, 68 knots. Confirm the fuel selector is on both. The fuel shutoff is pushed in. The mixture is rich. The auxiliary fuel pump is on. The ignition key is in the both magnetos position. And if the propeller has stopped spinning, turn the ignition key to the start position to restart the engine. If the instructor announces that the engine has failed to start, then the pilot must simulate conducting the emergency landing without power checklist. This portion of the checklist may be done using the checklist. The pilot squawks 7700, the emergency transponder code, turns the ELT on, announces mayday over the radio frequency 121.5, known as guard frequency, or the frequency they are currently communicating with air traffic control over. They then ensure any passenger's seat backs is in their full upright position. Seats and seat belts are secured and fastened. The cabin doors are unlatched to assist with a quick exit of the aircraft upon landing. Then the pilot pitches for an airspeed of 70 knots if no flaps are applied or 65 knots with full flaps applied as they are on their final approach to their chosen landing site. They then bring the mixture back to cut off and then pull the fuel shutoff valve out to the off position to prevent any fuel from entering the engine, preventing a fire if a hard landing were to occur. And the ignition key is brought to the off position. Upon arriving over the high key point and at 1000 feet above ground level, the pilot should begin circling to dissipate altitude to arrive at the low key point. The low key point is a beam the point of intended landing and should be arrived at as close to 800 feet above ground level as possible. From the low key point, the pilot then performs a moderate bank turn towards the base key point, which is 400 to 500 feet above ground level. This base leg should be flown closer than the standard base leg in the traffic pattern. The pilot must take into consideration the wind speed to determine how far out the base leg should be flown. As the pilot continues to turn to their final approach and landing, they then extend the flaps to the desired setting, and when landing is assured, they fully extend the flaps so the aircraft touches down at the slowest practical airspeed. Just before landing, the pilot completes the memory portion of the emergency landing without power checklist. When landing is assured, the pilot confirms the wing flaps are fully extended, the standby battery is turned off, the battery and alternator master switches are both turned off. The cabin doors are confirmed unlatched. And then the pilot touches down slightly tail low at the slowest possible speed, and then applies their brakes as needed. 
If performing the emergency approach and landing to an authorized airfield, the pilot should plan to continue the descent and perform a landing. Otherwise, they should be prepared to initiate the first go-around when instructed to do so or by 500 feet above ground level, whichever occurs first. Some helpful tips for conducting emergency approaches and landings from cruise altitude are During an off-airport emergency landing, a pilot needs to evaluate their landing site. If the aircraft is at a higher altitude and the best landing area is directly below them, the pilot should pick the field and the aiming spot and make plans to land into the wind. The pilot should circle right above the point they intend to land. As the aircraft circles, the pilot should evaluate their landing area. They should first examine the way the furrows run. Always land with the furrows and not against them. Next, they must evaluate for tree stumps, rocks, fence lines, power lines, small rivers or ditches. All of this needs to be evaluated on this descent. During the descent, remember to contact a nearby air traffic control facility and broadcast a mayday, or if none are nearby, then use the emergency frequency 121.5 and set your transponder to 7700. When managing the aircraft's altitude from the high key point, it can be roughly approximated by the bank angle used to perform the 360 degree circles. Less bank results in a lower rate of turn, causing the circle to be larger. Thus, more altitude will be lost per circle. More bank results in a higher rate of turn, causing the circle to be tighter. Thus, less altitude will be lost per circle. For example, a 40 degree bank at best glide will result in about 400 feet altitude loss per 360 degree circle. A 30 degree bank at a best glide would result in about 600 feet altitude loss per 360 degree circle. A 20 degree bank at best glide would result in about 800 feet altitude loss per 360 degree circle. Note, these values are approximate. The Airman Certification Standards for Emergency Descents are as follows. Best glide airspeed plus or minus 10 knots and corrected for headwind or tailwind. Identifies a suitable landing site. Manages aircraft's energy to make a controlled approach and landing without undershooting or overshooting the selected landing site. And performs the appropriate checklists. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.